So Twitter decided to uptick their deplatforming and censorship campaign. I wish that was hyperbole, but it's really not. So the other day, TJ Kirk, also known as the Amazing Atheist, he's a YouTuber with over a million subscribers. He had over 100,000 Twitter followers. Um, he tweeted something that is, without question, not even close, um, satirizing racism. So there was the uh, recent case of Sarah Zhang, I think her name is. She was hired by the New York Times, and a bunch of right-wing snowflakes dug up her past tweets, and some of them were um, either very offensive jokes. Uh, some people would say offensive jokes. I don't give a shit about jokes, so I don't know what I'd categorize them as. I would just say she's a silly person, but she said some stuff about how, oh, it brings me pleasure to see um, old white men in pain or something to that effect. And, uh, you know, there were tweets that uh, were either jokes or you could say are reflections of how she really feels, and she legitimately is uh, not too fond of white people. Well, either way, T.J. Kirk uh, saw this high-profile case. It was big news. And he decided, okay, I'm going to satirize that. So what did he say? White people are a disease. They are AIDS. They are a pox upon the earth and everything, and every stinking cracker, one of them, should die of every disease at once. So New York Times, how's about a lucrative job at your paper? I think I have demonstrated the qualifications. So, the, uh, to, it's hard, I can't even wrap my mind around the idea that somebody might read that and think it's serious? I mean, he says, every stinking cracker, one of them, should die of every disease at once. All white people should die of every disease at once. Even if you don't think it's funny, he is clearly being satirical and poking fun at the tweet where Sarah Zhang was either seriously or semi-seriously expressing that notion. It's, it's not even close. It's not remotely close. It is beyond obvious. You would have to pull a totally out-of-context hack job and misinterpret on purpose to not get that. Like, if you see white people are a disease, full stop, well, then maybe I could uh, say, okay... Perhaps you thought it was serious, because all you saw was white people are diseased. If you read the whole tweet, there's no... Again, it's not even close. It's obviously satirical in nature. So, where's the problem here? So, get this. Sarah Zhang, who did the, uh, you know, those tweets... Sim a similar tweet to this, but maybe was serious. I don't know. Again, maybe she's joking, maybe she's serious. I don't know. Again, I don't care. But either way, she was not pulled. And she didn't lose her job at the New York Times. Now, let me be clear. I don't want her to get pulled from Twitter. And I wouldn't even want her to lose her job at the New York Times. Why? Because I don't care. Uh, I'm not... I hate call-out culture and outrage culture. Just everybody let it go. Let it go. You could say, hey, this is stupid or this is wrong and here's why. But it's call for people to lose their job or anything like that. It's just... It's just stupid. And your priorities are misaligned. And you care about things that are just stupid culture war sideshows as we have real issues going on like wars and fucking... Uh, corruption at the highest levels of government with money and politics and people don't have health care and all that stuff. So let it go. But she is allowed to stay on Twitter. She's allowed to keep her job at the New York Times. TJ, who was making fun of her potential racism, pulled from the platform. He appealed it. He appealed the decision. Guess what? They were like, nope, you're in violation of our terms of service. Sorry, you're spreading hateful content. You're banned. Now, again, let me, let me make another parallel for you. Alex Jones, who was recently pulled from YouTube and, and Spotify and all that. Now, I don't agree with that. I, I would have left Alex Jones up. I've explained, you know, reasons why I, I think that is. Um, but Alex Jones' Twitter is standing by Alex Jones. Now, if you're from my school of thought, you go, okay, credit to them on that one. You know, even though there were instances of him violating the terms of service, the question is, hey, does it merit... The, the internet death penalty, the Twitter death penalty. So they're standing by him, but they axe TJ. When again, TJ is doing satire here, is making fun of somebody who was maybe racist. Okay, this makes no sense. This makes no sense, but this is what happens. We've now opened the door. 
We've now opened the door to censorship and deplatforming. So just as I told you from the beginning, it's never going to be used in an objective way. Ever. 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 Because behind this all are human beings. Human beings that have their own personal biases. Human beings that are not, you know, a perfect logic machines. And listen, I don't want to muddy the issue here because I really do think TJ, this example with TJ, is a particularly egregious example from Twitter. And they should reverse it immediately. Immediately. By the way, tweet this video at Twitter support, at Twitter support on Twitter. And tell them that. Say, hey, you guys messed up with TJ. You're going to... You're gonna have to bring him back. This isn't a question. I mean, you obviously fucked up. Now, be nice about it, but tell them, hey, you gotta put him back on the platform. What are you doing here? Now, again, I don't want to muddy the waters, but I do want to give other examples here, because this is, again, you, we open the door to the censorship, and now there's no ending. There's no stopping it. It's not a, hey, maybe this is a slippery slope. We're in the midst of the slippage. <laughs> We're already, like, more than halfway down that slope. So, this also happened. Uh, Twitter suspends Proud Boys accounts ahead of the Unite the Right rally. Now, let me be clear about something. Proud Boys, they're this stupid, goofy, dumb group that Gavin McGinnis has. Gavin McGinnis is a right-wing hipster douchebag. He's not cool, he's not edgy, I think these are the biggest losers in the world. I mean, Proud Boys, what? It even sounds, like, really stupid and pathetic. So these are the guys who are like, yeah, well, we're right wing and we're white and we're proud about it. We're not going to hide it. What do you care, bro? I'm white. Whatever, bro. I'm cool. I'm cool with it. Relax. You're not oppressed. Fuck face. Chill out. But so I don't like this group. I think they're really stupid. I've ripped Gavin McGinnis a new asshole like 14 times before. He went after MLK one time and it was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. But putting all that aside, what was the reason that they gave for getting rid of Gavin McGinnis? Well, here's what a Twitter spokesperson said, quote, we can confirm that these accounts have been suspended from Twitter and Periscope for violating our policy, prohibiting violent extremist groups. Pro so, just because they're a group that has been deemed hateful, now they have, they're not allowed to say anything on Twitter, and they are pulled down from social media. Now, again, I don't like the Proud Boys, and I actually do think that there's a semi-legit angle to this claim, because as part of their induction uh, ceremony to be a proud boy. It, you have to, uh, I think, beat somebody up who's like a leftist or something like that. Now, I don't know the details of it. Uh, maybe that's not true. I don't know. You'd have to get their side of it also, but from what I've read, it, that might be true, that that's part of the induction ceremony into being a proud boy. But they say, because of that, their account is going to be pulled down. Gavin McInnes's account is going to be pulled down. Nothing on the account called for a direct threat of violence. Nothing was libel, libel. Nothing was slander. Nothing was defamation. Nobody even is arguing or saying that that's the case. They just say, you're a group we consider hateful. By definition. So we're going to pull you down. Well, you do know what's going to happen, don't you? All the groups that are Antifa, that are against these people who are counter-protesting them, what are the, what's going to happen? Is the right now going to sit back and go, yeah, it's cool, ban all of our accounts, but then don't, there, there will be no parody and we're not going to come after you in kind. So what'll happen is they'll, uh, you know, take three or four examples of Antifa going too far, potentially being violent, and they'll say, whoa, what happened? Obviously Twitter has a left-wing bias because they banned the Proud Boys. So uh, if you guys want to, be fair about this and objective about this, well, you're gonna have to get rid of the left-wing violent groups too. So Antifa, forget it, ban them. There's gonna be a campaign to try to get Antifa banned. There's gonna be, you know, Black Lives Matter. There are some examples of some Black Lives Matter pro protesters marching and chanting, um, what do we want, dead cops, when do we want it now? So the right will point to that and say, hey, you just banned the Proud Boys. You just ban these right-wing groups, and you said their group is violent by definition, because some people in the group maybe were violent. So, that's the same thing with Antifa, that's the same thing with Black Lives Matter. Pigs in a, in a blanket, fry them like bacon, that's another thing that some Black Lives Matter protesters said. Now, is this reflective of the entire group? I would argue no. But that's not gonna matter! Because once you start pulling people down and you say, by definition, you are violent, there is no end to that! It will continue ad nauseum, ad infinitum. 
So you're going to have, they're going to come after Antifa, they're going to come after Black Lives Matter, and maybe you don't like Antifa, maybe you don't like Black Lives Matter, so you go, hey, you know what, that's fine. But it never ends. The censorship keeps going. So that's why I always try to point out to you guys that while you must, hey, it's fine to take down Alex Jones, he actually does hate speech. What the fuck do you think a Ted Cruz voter thinks when he's watching a video of mine and I'm ripping fundamentalist Christians a new asshole? What do they think? Oh, that's lovely speech, and that's just a different opinion from mine. No, they go, this guy is spreading hate speech. He just called fundamentalist Christians idiots. He's uh, offending over a billion people on this planet who are Christians, and I will not stand for that, sir. There's no end to this. And then, by the way, even if, let's say, hypothetically, right now, Jack, who's the head of Twitter, says, I don't buy your false equivalents. I don't think Antifa and BLM are equal to Proud Boys, so I'm going to leave Antifa and BLM up. How long is Jack going to be the head of Twitter? What happens when the next person, who's not Jack, uh, becomes the head of Twitter, and then that person might not have the same political leanings as Jack, and they might lean more to the right, or they might be genuinely in the center? They might, just for the sake of trying to appear non-biased, they might say, ban every BLM account, ban every Antifa account. Guys, it never ends once you open this door to censorship, ever. And by the way, again, I'm giving hypotheticals like, oh, maybe they'll do this to Antifa, maybe they'll do this to BLM. It's not even about a maybe. They already did it to TJ when he was clearly joking. You don't even have to like TJ Kirk. You ha but you have to acknowledge that was a joke, and it was bullshit that he got pulled down. You have to acknowledge that. And the list goes on and on. Guys, we've already spoken about it. Remember the height of Adpocalypse on YouTube? Well, there was a, a, an article in the Washington Post from a, a sh shady group called Proper Not, and they said, oh, we made a list of all of the outlets spreading fake news during the 2016 election. And guess what? Those outlets, Google deprioritized those outlets. That's why Alternate, for example, had a drop of about 70% in their traffic. Same with Truthout, same with Truthdig, same with Counterpunch. So there are all these... Whenever they start censoring and deplatforming, they will always come for independent media first. Now, sometimes people will like that because they'll go, oh... Well, Alex Jones really is an asshole. Alex Jones really is a fringe character. Alex Jones really is dangerous. But this, it, that's not about Alex Jones. It's about the principle of it. It's about the principle of it. So, we're already seeing it. We're in the middle of it right now. You know, I, I don't know how else I can warn you guys. I keep trying to point out that even if you agree with one of the targets of this, it never stops there. Once you open the door, that door is now open. So the answer, in my mind, is all of these platforms, they have to be regulated as public utilities. Why? Because, number one, they're too big. And number two, the whole point of these different social media outlets is speech! So you don't get to say, like, oh, it's just, it's just a private company. So they get to make their own decisions. The whole point of these particular platforms, Twitter and Facebook, YouTube, is speech. That's the whole point of it. Speech. So, on that alone, I think there's a good reason to have regulation to say they should have to abide by free speech laws and the Constitution in the way that the government has to. So again, regulate them as public utilities. On that alone, I think that's a good reason. But never mind once you bring in the angle of they're too big. They're fuck effectively monopolies. Now, if you break them up, they don't function in the same way, and it would become a different story. I know some people say, hey, break them up. I don't want to go down that road. I'd rather go down the road of just treat it like it's the public square, regulate it as a public utility, should be totally free and open. Now, don't get me wrong. If there are genuine examples of libel or defamation, which is written word, libel or slander, whatever, doesn't matter. You get the point. If there are examples of defamation or direct threats of violence, then yes, if they violate the law, of course you could pull down those particular videos, those specific videos. Sure, absolutely. But outside of those clear-cut examples, we have to have rules that say, hey, anything goes on the platform. Because if not, what are we doing? What are we doing here? This is digital authoritarianism. That's what this is. This is fucking internet tyranny. 
Now, again, you might laugh and you might, ha ha, whatever, it's not affecting me right now. It's going to fucking affect you. It is going to affect you. 100%. And remember, whenever you give either corporate overlords or the government this kind of power, the logical ends of that, it will be them using it in order to maintain their own power and silence dissent. That's always how it's used. Always, always, always. 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 So they're going to say everything that's fucking, oh my God, if you're reporting on the DNC emails that prove that the primary was rigged, hey, we consider that fake news because that maybe came from Russia and, it, and that is unacceptable. That's information that shouldn't have been leaked. So that's fake news. We're going to have to fucking push you to the corners of the internet, deplatform you, deprioritize you, censor you. Uh, oh, you're reporting on the wars. Well, the establishment agrees the wars are good. Let me ask you a question. When the, the entire mainstream media was pushing for the war in Iraq, when the entire mainstream media was calling torture enhanced interrogation because Bush wanted them to, isn't that fake news? Are they going to see any consequences? Will mainstream media see any consequences? No! Because the way this is used is it will always be biased in favor of the establishment and against independent outlets and people, sometimes who are reporting the truth, sometimes the people are genuinely fucking crazy. But again, there's a price you pay to have the truth tellers there, and that price is the freedom enough to have the crazy people spew their nonsense too. That's what freedom is, and freedom is better than any kind of authoritarianism or tyranny or censorship or deplatforming. And listen, now, now you see just a clear example of, oh, well they sure fucked this one up. Of course, they're gonna fuck up so many of them. Because you shouldn't be begging Silicon Valley oligarch billionaires to filter shit for you.